Hey guys, Caitlin here. And for this week's YouTube episode, I wanted to focus on the chief complaint of headaches or migraines in the emergency department. Um, I get a lot of patients coming in looking to get help with their migraine as their at-home medicines are just not helping. Um, but first, I want to talk about some of the red flags for a headache. Um, and those red flags usually require some type of imaging and or further workup. But um, then we will talk about the management of a headache and a lot of alternatives to opioids. So let's get started. So a lot of people like to use the mnemonic of SNOOP for the red flags for headaches. And this can stand for systemic symptoms, secondary risk factors like being immunocompromised, any type of neurologic symptoms, an onset greater than 50 years old. Um, so any headache greater than 50 years old that is new is definitely a red sign. Um, the headache's sudden or abrupt, any type of postural aggravation. So this can be a sign of a bleed as the blood in the brain can be uh, moving around and definitely worsened by postural aggravation. Same thing for Valsalva and any type of papillal edema that you can see is definitely a sign of increased intracranial pressure. When it comes to a snoop, and that um, mnemonic to help you remember um, all the red flags for a headache. I find it really hard to remember that one because there's just so many S's, so many O's, so many P's. Um, so I like to use the mnemonic of SING CAN. So the S can uh, stand for any type of systemic symptoms, fevers, body aches, chills. Um, I can stand for um, intracranial bleeds. Um, so if the headache happens, um, acutely sudden onset worst headache of your life then you need to think of a subarachnoid hemorrhage um, you can also use i for any type of immunocompromised patients so hiv patients that have been missing their medications for some sort of reason they can have toxoplasmosis in their brain um, so you want to keep those patients in mind for um, any type of infectious headaches um, then the N can stand for any type of neurologic symptoms, so any altered mental status, focal neurologic deficits, seizures. Um, if they have any of that, I would definitely get a CT of their brain. Um, the G stands for giant cell arteritis because you don't want to miss that temporal headache. So if they have temporal tinnitus, jaw codification, then you want to think about giant cell arteritis. Um, and then... The C can stand for any cancer, so those cancer patients, then you want to think about um, possible spread to the head, or if they are on chemotherapy, then they're going to be immunocompromised. Um, a stands for age greater than 50, so new onset headaches um, greater than 50 is definitely a red flag. Um, and then M stands for meningitis, so if they're having a headache um, and concomitant neck stiffness, um, then you are going to want to consider meningitis and you might want to do a further workup on LP um, from there. But if they're having their normal migraine and they don't have any of these red flags, then you're going to thinking about um, what will work for their headache. So obviously you can ask them what works for your headache, what um, can I do for you in the emergency department? A lot of patients know, um, and if it's not an opioid, I usually agree with their treatment plan, but if they don't know, then you can talk about some alternatives with the patient. So despite the overwhelming evidence against using opioids for headaches in the emergency department, um, a lot of ED providers are still prescribing opioids for headaches. Um, I find that Opioids, one, are just not indicated, and two, are not very helpful in ending a headache. Um, the number one treatment option that I think of is using uh, the co-administration of Compazine and Benadryl for ending a headache. Um, Compazine, 10 milligrams IV, um, has been very effective in ending headaches for me um, in his first line, and 44% of patients can get akathisias or restlessness um, while receiving compassine. So I usually give it with 25 to 50 milligrams of Benadryl to kind of calm down the sacathesias. And if you administer it over 15 minutes, um, then that will decrease the side effect as well. But I've had um, many successful cases of this um, working completely ending someone's headache or definitely lowering it on the pain scale. So this is the number one treatment option for me um, when a patient has their normal migraines and needs something to kind of end this headache. Another alternative to this is using Haldol. Um, 
they have very similar mechanism of actions and how it all has been shown to be just as safe as using Reglan for ending headaches and also helping with a little bit of nausea that usually comes along with headaches and migraines. Um, and then if that doesn't um, really satisfy the patient and they're ready to go home after that, I can tag on two milligrams, um, excuse me, two grams of magnesium. And usually this helps a lot with migraines, is very safe. Um, and it is a good second line treatment option on top of Compazine and what I do. Um, and then at the very least, um, if that doesn't work, you can always add on Toradol and Dexamethasone. Um, Decadron, I find, is good in the acute cases of also ending a migraine. Um, and then also, if you use up to 50 milligrams of Dexamethasone, it has um, a 26% rating of reducing a relapse of an acute headache. Uh, so sometimes I like to send my patients home on a dose of this um, just to prevent that relapse and really make them feel better for the next couple of days after. And I'm sure you guys have heard about the different types of headaches that you can have. So the migraines are going to be that unilateral behind the eye, um, going in and out, stabbing in nature, can have a aura, aura that comes before the migraine, um, can have nausea, vomiting, um, photosensitivity, hyperacusis with uh, migraines. Um, then you might have the tension type headaches that patients can have a band-like tightness squeezing over their head, neck stiffness usually comes along with stress. Um, then you can have cluster headaches, so those are, those are going to be unilateral as well. Um, it's going to be episodic in nature. You can have a lot of rhinorrhea, uh, meiosis with it as well. Um, so when it comes to cluster headaches, and if a patient's been diagnosed with cluster headaches, or you're pretty sure you're dealing with a cluster headache in the emergency department, um, alternative to opioids in this case can be um, high flow oxygen. So put a face mask on these patients, turn up the oxygen all the way, at least greater than 10 liters. Um, this ends their headaches pretty well for cluster headaches. Um, another specific type of headache I think about is post LP headaches. So I see this a lot with um, patients that have just delivered a baby um, if they're having a post LP headache after their spinal that they had. Um, laying the patients flat, so don't let them sit up, lay them completely flat, give them lots of fluids, and then also giving them IV caffeine is very helpful in ending these headaches and those patients that have the post LP headaches. Um, and then you don't even have to use any other type of medication in that case, it's just IV caffeine. Um, so, and then a couple other alternatives you can, that I've read about, I've never actually done any trigger point injections. So a lot of people have occipital neuralgia that have that lightning, lightning like sensation coming from the back of the head, going there. Um, a lot of these patients will have point tenderness, um, where that occipital neuralgia or the occipital nerves come into the lower scalp area, if they have point tenderness in that area and it's causing this sensation of lightning going across their head, um, then some of them have been shown to really benefit from a trigger point injection. Um, I've never done this. I definitely want to try it sometime. Um, so you can think about that in those specific patients as well and i've actually heard of patients using or sorry excuse me providers using ketamine and propofol for ending intractable migraines as well but like i said before my first line is compazine and benadryl then i add a magnesium decadron ketirolac after that um, and then use propofol and ketamine for um, my very severe cases and or patients that have a lot of allergies to other medications that's it guys, thanks for listening. Um, I hope this encourages you to avoid using opioids for headaches because one, they are really just not effective and two, we are in an opioid crisis. So really think about the alternatives because the alternatives work. Um, I have so much success with my first line of Compazine and Benadryl. And if not, then Magnesium and Decadronic and Terilac really work as other side um, medications as well. Um, so I hope this helps. Thanks for listening. See you next week, guys.